In this video, I'm going to show you some cool and simple motion sensor light automations in Node-RED. Make sure you stick around and if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button below and keep an eye out for more videos. Hi, I'm Will from Will Surridge Tech, and today we're going to dive into my node red and have a look at some of the motion sensor light automations that I have set up. So let's get going. So in each room, I have a selection of lights. Sometimes these are hue, sometimes these are light strips. Um, and I also occasionally have some hue switches in some of my rooms. And what I wanted to do was actually change this because I was fed up with having to turn a light switch on all the time and that light switch not controlling all the lights. Um, and I've got some motion sensors. So I put motion sensors in a selection of rooms and then I created some automations to, to go with that. Um, I started off with a very simple automation, you know, turn on when you detect motion and turn off after a couple of minutes of no motion. And that works in most cases, um, but actually I soon found that there are a lot of exceptions where that doesn't work. And in those cases, you need to write exceptions basically into your flows. Um, so I'll walk you through each of the rooms and each of the automations I've got set up. Of course, these aren't perfect. I mean, I'm covering quite a few exceptional use cases, um, but I'm definitely not covering all of them. And I discover new ones every day. Well, not quite, but I discover new ones a lot. Um, so I'm always editing and tweaking these just to catch those odd occasions where the lights go off when they're not meant to. Of course, below I've left a link to the code for my flows. Um, so I'd suggest you copy that and import it into your node red now, and then you can follow along with what I'm doing. So let's get going. So this is my node red. This is my lighting tab. I like to keep my node red flows organized and I'd recommend you do the same. Um, so you can see that I've laid it out simply. I've labeled things. Um, and it just means you can follow your flows more easily and catch the exceptions and work out what they're doing and, and why when it comes to editing them later down the line. So we'll start off with an automation that I actually set up in my old house and I no longer use. Um, so I've got this automation on thing, which is basically an input Boolean um, where I can just turn off the entire automation from running. So this is a light scheduler. Um, it's a an additional palleted node. Um, and it basically means you can plot an on and an off and it will automatically go on at 10 o'clock and off at midnight. Well, it doesn't actually, it goes off at 6 a.m. Um, and it just changes the payload and triggers the automation at those two times. And you can set different things for different times, um, different days of the week. So it's a nice way to schedule your light. Uh, admittedly, between 10 and midnight every day isn't the best use of this node, but I thought I'd show you this node anyway. And that then goes to a switch and if the switch is on, then it turns the lights on. If the switch is off, it turns the lights off. Um, I don't use that anymore. I've got a slightly more advanced thing. This was actually to stop slugs getting into the house. And I found that the, the LED strips under the counter prevented that. Um, so that was the kind of initial thing for that. Um, so anyway, onto the actual motion lights. So the first one is very simple. It's the entrance hall motion. Um, so I've got a motion sensor in there and if the motion sensor is detected, so it's on, then it turns the light on. And I've split off the on and the off for all of these. Um, I just find it's a better way of doing that because the event state node has this brilliant kind of for command, which means it's got to be off for that time before it triggers the flow. Um, and that's really useful for all of these because it means you can set different times for different rooms and different occasions. Um, so that's why I've split them. Other people I know you could just use a delay, um, but then if you still have motion after that delay, then it will go off and then trigger back again. So that's a bit useless. So this is the best way of doing it that I found. Uh, so when it's on, it's on. After it's been off for 20 seconds, it turns the light off. And I've also got this. So I've got, so the entrance hall light is actually outside of my front door. So I've got a door sensor on my front door. And if that detects motion and the light is not on, so if it's on, then it goes up through the top of this. So I'm going through the bottom, which is mean it's if it's not on. And if it's not on, then it'll turn the light on. So that means that if I'm coming into the house from the outside, it will have already detected the motion and turned the light on. 
uh, so I don't need to trigger it. But if I'm coming from the inside, when I open the door, it turns the light on, which is generally a second or so before the motion sensor detects me. And um, so that's a nice little way to get that extra couple of seconds of light. Uh, next we have the nighttime P. This is basically, if I get up in the middle of the night, it'll turn the lights on in the kitchen so I can find my way to the bathroom. So the bedroom door is the trigger. If the bedroom door is open and I'm sleeping, so my sleeping input boolean, which is a state kind of input boolean that I use for a lot of things, um, is on, then it will turn the light on. It'll then delay 30 seconds, so that gives me enough time to get from the bedroom out of the hall, um, and then it will wait until the hall motion happens again. So that basically means that obviously the hall motion will be triggered as soon as I leave the bedroom, and then I and then I go away, go to the loo, um, and that's what the 30 seconds is, and then it waits for the hall motion to happen again. So that means it gives me enough time to come back, um, it to be detected, and then it waits for it to go off, um, because I don't want it plunging me into darkness when I'm in the hall. So I wait for that to go off and then I'll turn the light off. It's quite almost convoluted, but it works. What can I say? Um, kitchen. This is a very simple one. I say they're all kind of simple, but they're all kind of got different conditions. Um, so when the kitchen motion is detected, it'll see whether it's dinner time because during the dinner scene, I have various light strips at certain states and some of them off. So I don't want to just be triggering them all on during the dinner scene when I don't want them all on. Uh, so we've got the dinner scene. If it's off, then it checks whether I'm sleeping. That's because if I'm sleeping, I want this to happen and not this. Um, and then it checks the time. If it's between seven and seven, then it turns it onto a cold light. If it's outside of that time, it'll turn it onto a warm light. That just means I'm not getting stark white lighting at night, which I don't want. Um, so a very simple automation, very simple triggers. And the same for turning it off. If it's off for a period of time, two minutes, then I check dinner scene. Because again, I don't want to be turning them all off. If I'm sitting down for dinner, it might not detect me moving because I don't exactly move much when I'm eating. Um, so I don't want it to turn them off on me. So if it's not dinner time, then it will turn the lights off. Simple as that. Uh, next, we move on to the sitting room. Again, if there's motion and the lights are off, then we check the TV. Because if the TV is on and the lights are off, then that probably means I'm watching a film and I want it to be dark. So I don't want these to move. Well, I don't want these lights to turn on when I've moved my body whilst watching a film. So if the lights are off, the TV is off and the sun is above the horizon, then it will turn it onto a cold light. If it's below the horizon, it will turn it to a warm light. So that's a very similar way of doing the between seven and seven, um, just a different method and kind of, a, I suppose it adapts with the seasons, um, which is quite nice. So I might change more over to this. Depends how you feel, depends what you want, but I quite like, So, but I've done this to show you the different options I suppose you've got. And the same with turning them off. It's only going to turn them off if the TV is off and the Sonos is off. Um, so that basically means that if I'm watching TV and the lights are on and I don't move for a bit because I'm sitting still watching TV, I don't get plunged into darkness. And the same if I'm sitting still listening to music, I don't get plunged into darkness because nobody wants that. So they're simple conditions to prevent unnecessary blackouts. And now we move on to the cave. Now this is where it's got a bit more complicated um, and I've basically made another automation that figures out whether I'm in the room or not. Um, so I'll show you that first and then we can see how that triggers the rest of this flow. So if there is motion, then it turns occupancy on. Because if there's motion in a room, it means I'm in the room. I think we can all agree on that. And then it checks whether the door is open. If the door is open, then it waits for motion to be off for three minutes. And then it will turn occupancy off. So that just means that if I come into the room, I've got three minutes after the motion has been detected for before the lights turn off. So I can come into the room, leave three minutes later, the lights will turn off, which is kind of what I have on the other ones. Um, but what I found was happening was actually if I just had that, then if I sat at my desk for three minutes being still, then the lights would go off. And we don't really want that. Um, 
So what we've got is we're checking if the door is open and if the door is not open, so the sensor is false, then we wait until the door does open. Because if I'm in the room and the door is shut and the door stays shut, then I'm still in the room. I haven't jumped out the window or anything. So I don't want the lights to go off during the time that I'm in the room. It makes sense, doesn't it? Um, so we wait until the door does open and then we wait until motion goes off. But all we've got is this on this join wait, we've got a very short timeout, which means that if there is still motion after 90 seconds, then it won't turn occupancy off. And we'll go back to the beginning of the flow and it will go motion, okay, door open, yes, this time because it hasn't re shut until the motion goes off and then we turn it off. Um, so that basically means if someone else comes into the room and leaves the door open and starts chatting for a bit and then leaves, then it won't turn it off on me. What was happening before I added this is as soon as that door opened, it would turn the lights off, which I don't want. Um, so again, that's a little use case and a nice little flow to get me out of that. This join weight is a node available in a separate palette. Um, so you've just got to search your palettes for the join weight uh, and use that. And it basically, you set it up to wait for two different topics. So the first one is the cave motion, which is created by this event state node. And the second one is the cave door created by this event state node. Um, so it waits until it's got those two or until it times out. And again, if it times out, it goes nowhere. Get it? So let's see how that works out in the control of the lights. So if the occupancy is on and I'm not recording and the lights aren't already on and I'm not sleeping, then check the time. So what that's doing is if I'm recording, then I've got some lights on and some lights off. Um, so I don't want to be flashing up lights by moving uh, or if, if that were to happen. So it's just kind of a fail safe for when I'm recording. Then we're checking whether the lights are on. If the lights are on, I don't need to turn them on again because I might have set them to a certain level and I don't want to change that level later on down the flow. And then we're checking sleeping. That's because the motion sensor is actually pointing through the door. So if I leave the door open overnight, then it will detect me walking down the corridor at night if I'm asleep. And I don't want the lights to all come on in the middle of the night if I'm going for a pee. Um, so we check if I'm sleeping and then we check the time. If it's between six and seven, uh, then we go to cold. If it's outside of that time, then we go to warm. Again, just arbitrary times. It, I could have used the sun in here, um, but I wanted times just to give me a bit of flexibility and control because uh, then I can align it with kind of my day at the computer. Um, so I make sure I'm not triggering it wrongly just because the sun's gone down earlier in the year. Um, so that's a very simple side. And then on the other side, if the state is false or it's off, then again, we check recording. We don't want it to suddenly turn off while I'm recording in case everything else failed. We check the lights on. We don't want to turn the lights off if the lights are already, if they aren't already on. Um, and then we do a test light. So that means that if something has failed, this hasn't happened to me yet, but if something has failed, then the first thing that's going to happen is my desk light is going to go off. And that means if I'm in the middle of a video call or something, I don't just get plunged into darkness. I just get a slight notification that something's going to happen. And then it gives me 20 seconds to rectify that. Um, so I could, you know, wave my arms and that would trigger the motion sensor and reactivate the occupancy in Boolean, I suppose. Um, so then after those 20 seconds, it checks occupancy again. If there is occupancy, then we turn the desk light back on. If there's not, then we continue and turn the rest of the lights off. And then we've got a very similar thing for my desk. So this is just a smart plug um, at the moment, and it kind of follows the same sort of principle. So we check the occupancy. If it's occupied, we check recording, we check whether it's on or not, and then we check whether I'm sleeping or not. Again, don't want my monitors and my speakers to come on in the middle of the night. Why would I? Uh, and then we check the time. And this is a slightly different time bracket because sometimes I'll come in, come in here kind of in the morning or, or late at night when I want the lights to be cold because it's daytime still to, for me, but I don't need my desk on because maybe I'm just coming in here to grab something or to put my shoes on or whatever. Um, so we'll only put the desk time on 
So we only put the desk on if it's between eight and six outside of that time. I'm probably coming in here to do something else. So there's no need for the desk to turn on. Simple. Obviously, I can always override these just by toggling an input Boolean or toggling the switch in my dashboard, which is obviously what I was doing before these motion sensors. Um, and then when it goes off, again, we check recording. Don't want to plunge myself into darkness while I'm recording. We check whether it's on. Don't want to turn it off if it's already off. Uh, and then we delay 20 seconds. That is because up until now, we're following the same path as the lights. So the desk light will have gone off here. So this delay kind of lines up in terms of actual time with that delay. So I've got the kind of notification that it might be turning off by the other light. Um, and then I've got 20 seconds to react. Uh, so that 20 seconds is copied here effectively. And then again, it checks the occupancy again. And if there is no occupancy, then it will turn the desk off. So I've got that little fail safe before everything turns off because it's really inconvenient if everything turns off on me and I'm mid video call or whatever. So that's all my motion sensing automations for you. Um, I've got different triggers, I've got different conditions, I've got different ways of tackling a very similar problem in a number of cases, for example, the sun. Um, so I think hopefully you'll have either gained some insight, learned something, or hope to be able to apply this to your own motion sensing world as well. Um, this is a different way of recording for me, if you couldn't tell. Uh, so I hope that's worked well for you. I hope I've been going slowly enough. Um, and explaining everything as I go. Uh, of course, links below to the code. Um, if you want to copy it or make use of it or edit it to your own stuff. Um, yeah, so there we go. The selection of lighting automations in Node Red. Make sure you click subscribe and hit the bell icon to find out more about My Smart Tech and how you can build yourself the ultimate smart home.